thought I'd do a quick video. I wasn't going to do one this week or for a while. So there's been a lot of things going on. Didn't really have the time to uh, to upload them. But uh, got a few things that I want to a bit low down here. But I've messed me back up. So I'm trying to sit on my seat and keep a bit upright. But um, I've got 103 subs now, which is pretty cool. Um, quite privileged that a hundred of people want to watch what I'm doing and brewing and things like that. Um, I predominantly kind of started doing videos just because I wanted to kind of be able to give the feedback of the beers that other people had sent me after I'd sent them something was only fair rather than them, me just sort of message them and saying that I liked it and what, what not if they took the time to review a video for me and do my beer on a, on a, on a video. It's, it's only right that I can sort of give it back to them. Wouldn't say I'll probably give as great as reply back as what they do for some of my beers and that, and I probably wouldn't say I've got the greatest palate in the world, but I like to think that when I do review, I give a give an honest view of it, and you know, I don't don't just pull shit out of the air like some people seem to do. I'm not cast any obsessions on any people in the home brewing community, but like some of the professional reviewers, and that seems to kind of just pull stuff out of the air and say they can taste this and they can taste that and. They may well do, but I mean, I can't on some things, and I just wonder if sometimes that they've just got a, a vocabulary of things that they can put out the air and just to ramble on and make it sound like they know what they're talking about, but you know, they make a living out of it or whatever, that's, that's fair enough. Um, what have I been up to? I've tested a few of my beers I've done. The Chili Lager, the split batch that I did with the Coriander, it was a Young's Harvest kit that I got for quite cheap. Chili Lager's turned out really well. It's Dry hopped with Amarillo, dry hopped with chilies, um, but also boiled with chilies and boiled with Amarillo. Uh, it's come out really well. It's not too hot. It's just got like a nice balance. It's, you can you can still get the Amarillo hops, but it's kind of um, not too fiery. Just a nice warming on on the on the back of the palate. It's quite it's done up quite well. It's better than the the standard Young's Lager kit as it is. The coriander one. Isn't so great. I mean, I use some coriander seeds that are in the cupboard, and they've been there a while, to be honest. But I didn't want to kind of add extra expense, so I just wanted to throw what I had in there and just see how it turned out. But I used the rest of some Dana hops, and they used the Dana hops in a bitter. I didn't really think you could get much from them, but I think they've come out more in the lager. I mean, they meant to give like an orangey kind of taste in that, but it's they seem to come out a bit more in that. So it's kind of got a very kind of fresh, freshy orange taste to it, but not, you know. Not sickly orange, it's just got a, it'll go it'll go well with curry kind of beer. Um, also I've tried the milestone black pearl that I did. Um, I tried one bottle about two or three weeks back that had not as much carbonation. It was an okay as a stout, and I've just tried one last night that I put the bourbon essence into. Um, I tried one bottle that I only put like a mill in. Uh, it did taste very Almost sickly, I would say, a bit, a bit hard going. I think that one needs to mellow out, but as it's a stout, I mean, I can stick it in the garage for a while and see how it goes, but I think it's almost too much, so God knows what the ones that have got two or three drops in are like. I um, also added peppermint or spearmint, I can't remember which one, to some of the bottles and vanilla, but I haven't tried them ones yet. Um, I've got a beer to test right now. I've done the Festival Pilgrim's Hope kit. Um, that's been in the bottle for three weeks now, so gonna crack one of them. Also got given another glass recently. Someone come back from Germany. It's quite nice. It's a Fran Franzikammer Weiss beer glass. And it's clear but then when the cold beer hits it that bit turns to a ready pink and that. straight away in it, very much like the the golden staple. It's different hops but you can smell straight away that it's got that that hoppiness. This is more of a, a bitter kit this one. Well, the other one was a lot lighter the, the golden stack. It's nice and clear. Very see-through, um, bit of colour, almost almost a ruby red colour. I don't know if you can 
can see that it's gone pink on there now, but that's really good. It's got more bitterness to it than the, uh, the golden stag had, funny enough, being a bitter kit, I suppose. But it's got a uh, target and summit hops in it, but doesn't doesn't blow you away. Just not as much as the, the golden stag. That was really kind of in your face. This is kind of more of a little bit more subtle, but it's still there. Only thing I found with the um, golden stag is that you kind of had to drink them pretty quick because. After a while, I mean, I keep most of my beers for quite a long time. I just probably just don't drink a lot, to be honest. I end up giving more of it away or, you know, keeping it for longer than most people, purely because it's not stored in my house most of the time, so it's just not there to drink. But, um, yeah, the, the hop profile in the beer did diminish quite a bit, so you didn't get as much on the nose and the taste. And it was still there in the last little golden steak I had the other day, but just not as much as when you first got it, kind of thing. So, so with this not being too much up front, I wonder if it will be this drunk even quicker. But that is lovely, another, I mean, I don't know, other people might say that it can know that that's a kit beer, but if I'd poured that from a branded bottle, I wouldn't know no difference. That is really nice. So, hopefully, once I've got a couple of other beers sorted out. Um, moving on to that, actually, I've just checked my wheat beer. I've done an extract wheat beer. Um, and I used, uh, it had the liquid yeast with the kit, which was the WLP 300, I think. Heifer Weissen yeast. And that's just gone off mental. I didn't even make a start or anything. Just poured the little vial straight in. And, uh, because like I said, I don't brew at my house, so I went and checked on it a few days later and it had kind of exploded, blew the lid off it, it already had a blow-up pipe in it, but it was, yeah, it was just a mess, but I mean, obviously you don't need a starter for that particular yeast, I mean, I don't know what, what it would be like if you created a starter on that one, I guess it would just be even more volcanic, but it's been uh, fermenting at about 19 degrees for the past week, so, you know, it's still going strong. Um, they recommend that one's drunk quite young. It's meant to be a cloudy wheat beer, like, like some of the wheat beers you get. So after the two weeks ferment and then a couple of weeks in the bottle, they recommend you start cracking into it. And they recommend that you drink all of it within five weeks, but it will keep longer. So once that's sorted as well, and a couple of the other beers that I've got, the so the other uh, milestone experiments, the Black Pearl ones, I'll... Uh, be sending out some more beer mails to a couple of people, I think, just to see what they think of some of these beers. Uh, well, I'm starting to write stuff down this week because I just forget shit all the time. Uh, I got some blue barrels free this week, which is quite good because I wanted something to store my grains in uh, for where I do my brewing. And I did originally see some on uh, eBay. I wanted one kind of big 60 litre one with a, a metal ring on the top where I could put the grains in it, seal it. I'm not worried about mice and stuff getting into it. Um, that was about 20 odd quid on eBay and that. Um, but our work, or where I work rather, we do containers and things like that. So I phoned our supplier just to see what they could do on, on that particular container. And they were more expensive than it was to buy on eBay, which is a bit strange. A uh, week later passes at work, I just see two of a very similar thing, slightly smaller, lying somewhere. Asked my boss what they were for. He said they were bought in for something, no longer needed. The, person who brought them in didn't want them so I've now got two free barrels that have had nothing in them they've got metal sealable lids like the like a closing ring around the top and I think each one must be about 40 or 50 litre so a split bag of grain between them will uh, hold it nicely and he even did say he might be able to uh, get me one more but I don't know he's gonna wangle that but who knows um, what else I've made my wart chiller. It's not the prettiest of things, but I hope that it will do the job. It looks like a wart chiller. I mean, 
I'll wrap mine around a around a corny cake, but thinking back, I probably should have done it on a, a flatter surface and not done it after having a couple of beers. But you know, when you're sitting there and you think I could be doing that right now, I just thought shit, I'll just go and make it, and you know, you know, as long as it works, I don't really care. And it only cost me 19 quid for the copper, as opposed to however much watches are. You know, I've got nothing against buying stuff pre-made and that, but after getting some of my my stuff pre-made, which I wouldn't have been able to do. There's certain things that I thought I wouldn't mind having a stab at just to save money because more money saved on the equipment is more money spent on the beer. And, you know, we all want more beer. Um, that's pretty much about it. There's only one other thing, and that is the festival. I've got another beer cut out this week. And that is the IPA Razorback. Um, and Brew UK have just lowered their price to I think it's 20 quid for the, the uh, festival kit range including the new one so being in love with their kits couldn't help but order the new one just to see what it's going to be like so that's that's on its way um, and hopefully once that's brewed and I've got a couple of other brews out of the way I've just got a few more bits of equipment sorted out silly little things and then hopefully it will be time for a bit of bit of all grain brewing. I'm still going to do kits, I won't have the time to do an all grain, I don't know, every month. Hope I'm hoping to do one a month if possible, but you know, kits are going to predominantly be my sort of my stock, but when I want to work on a real nice recipe or something, I'm going to, going to try and bash out an all grain that, just purely only because I don't brew it at my flat. If I did, I'd have the time to sit there leaving the mash on while I could go and do stuff with the kids and things like that, but you know, I can't be expected to go off somewhere sort of every other week just to, to, to do a brew, just like that. So, but I think that's about it. So, it's not a homebrew Wednesday, it's just a, an update on a Saturday night, if you like. So, cheers, and see you next time.